Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, th thank you for being here. Uh, and I think you should start the clock now, not before. Yeah. Um, so uh, the topic is uh, globalization uh, and, what, and India's role in it. Uh, I want to make four points. Yeah. Point number one is a kind of observation and outlook on globalization. So my kind of one-liner here, the way to think about this, is to say that hyper-globalization is dead, long live globalization. What I mean by that is that if you look around the world, essentially deeper forms of integration like what you see in Europe, uh, uh, flows of people, I think uh, going forward they're not going to be as strong uh, as they used to be because of all that we're seeing around the world. Uh, but I do think India confront this. I think it's clear that if we have to grow at 8 to 10 percent per year, we need global market in the 2000s. And that means that, you know, global markets must be open. If there are H-1B visas imposed, if there's a lot of uh, subsidization of steel, that's going to hurt us uh, very badly. So I think that's very important. But if this has to be maintained if markets have to be maintained open globally increasingly we will have the responsibility to champion these open markets because you know the traditional champions are receding Europe the United States etc uh, etc et so we need to lead um, and the finance minister has been very eloquent on this saying that now in India this is becoming uh, the rule but if we are to lead this it is imperative that we be willing to open our markets as well because increasingly around the world it's a kind of you open your market I open my markets kind of game so we can't say oh you must remain open and we'll do what we want those days are gone uh, those were the old days when we said you know we will do whatever we want but then we didn't matter enough now we matter a lot and because we matter if we want to keep markets open we must be willing to be open ourselves we must be willing to open now how do we achieve this opening there are many ways of doing it we can do it multilaterally to the world trade organization or we can do it through other regional initiatives including negotiating new agreements with the european union the united kingdom uh, with asia and so forth so so that's point number two that we need markets open we must therefore be open and we must be proactive in championing this point number three and this is I think uh, a connection that's not often made uh, and it's very very important all the history of you know opening up of emerging markets that happened in the last 20 30 years the history and the evidence is very clear that in order to be able to keep markets open our exchange rates must be competitive if we have uncompetitive exchange rates if our currency becomes too strong then it is going to be very difficult for us to open our markets because then we'll have the double whammy where we lower our tariff barriers our rupee strengthens which means we will be exposed to too much competition which will not be politically uh, saleable domestically so when I hear you know, people in India say, oh, the exchange rate doesn't matter, we will you know, focus on other aspects of competitiveness like easing doing business, improving productivity, etc., etc., my response to them is, use all the instruments that you have at your disposal. The exchange rate is a very important instrument for maintaining competitiveness and for boosting our growth. It is also a I think mistake and a, a misguided view to associate a strong currency with a sign of national or economic strength. I think that's a mistake that we should not make uh, and it's something that we should be careful about. Therefore, if you look at the last two years, our we have lost competitiveness from the exchange rate by about 12 for maybe between 10 and 15 percent depending upon how you measure it and that's a huge loss in competitiveness that's affecting uh, our exports recently you know the clothing sector has been affected the pharmaceutical sector has been affected I think this is going to be um, very careful needs to be carefully watched therefore my point number three is that openness and globalization needs supportive exchange rate policies and we have to ensure that our exchange rate remains competitive my last point, uh, and I'm going to you know, uh, annoy all of you here, 
I am extremely disappointed with Indian industry that it has not been more vocal on these exchange rate issues. Why is it that you know, Indian industry is happy to you know, say, raise my tariffs because Chinese steel is coming in, but it doesn't say, oh, the currency has gone up by, strengthened by 5, 10, 15 percent, why don't we do something about it? Uh, and you know, it's simple economics that if your currency strengthens by 10 percent, it's like a tariff reduction of 10 percent, it's like an export tax of 10 percent. And yet Indian industry has been remarkably quiet, remarkably complacent, remarkably acquiescent uh, in this phenomenon. So um, I want to put you all on the spot. I want you to be, uh, answer and be accountable for what's happening. But my f to summarize my four points are, we are going to see globalization but not hyper-globalization. India has an extremely important championing role to play, but that means we must be willing to be more open. That means, number three, we must have more supportive exchange rate policies. And ex a strong exchange rate is not a sign of national or economic strength. And number four, all of you need to do much more, both in pushing the globalization agenda, which I think often you've been reticent about, and about supportive exchange rate policies to promote that globalization. Thank you very much.